Okay, so this next part, we're going to learn and talk, kind of discuss permutations, but there's a few things we need to learn be, uh, before that. And we're going to talk about factorials, so more sophisticated ways of counting. Okay, so let's just start with some a simple example. We have the word math. And I want to take the letters and just arrange them in a code, in a four-letter code. How many different ways can the letter letters of the word math be arranged? Well, let's go ahead and do um, make sure we know our categories and our choices. So we know we want a four-letter code. So that means our code will have one, two, three, four characters in which will be one of the letters from the word math. Now we're only going to be using the letters once because we want different ways that we can arrange the letters. So this means that for the first letter that I want to pick for this character here, how many choices do I have? Right, so here's the choices and here's the categories. Okay, so in the first letter I have four choices. I can pick M-A-T-H, right? That one's taken. But if I take one, I took one, how many letters do I have left to pick from? Three. And if I pick uh, the third letter, I only have two. And notice I don't have a choice on that last one. It's whatever's left over. And then I could use the basic multiple counting, multiplication rule and just multiply, which would be 24. So there are 24 different um, four letter codes. And you're like, well, that's similar to just multiplying. Well, what if I had supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, right? <laughs> I'm not going to put, you know, 13 letter, 13 times 2. You know, we're not going to write that out and take up paper and walls. You know, we want to be more sophisticated. So mathematicians did. They became, they developed a more sophisticated way of multiplying, especially when it's the case where we start at a whole number and we multiply through all the descending whole numbers down to one. Whole numbers, remember, is um, all the numbers including zero. So we would want all the whole numbers only including one and higher, which are called natural numbers. So we would want to start at a natural number, I should say, and descend down to the lowest natural number, which is one. When we take the product of those numbers, this is actually called factorial. Any sort of factorial means that you're taking a natural number and multiplying all the natural numbers from that number all the way down to one. So that's what n factorial means, that some number, natural number, all the way down to one. So there are a few special cases, like the factorial of one is one, which seems normal, right? One factorial is one. Zero factorial is also one, and that's always a fun proof if you go into number theory and stuff. So, but for now, you can just believe me, because now we're just trying to count. And so, really, I could have rewrote this one as four factorial, which is 24, right? So if we go to our calculator, our calculator is also very sophisticated. And you have this button here on the top a second row middle and it's called PRB and most calculators have it um, and it's usually in a met if you're using a graphing calculator it's in a menu or if you use an online calculator it should just be there as a symbol but if you have this calculator go ahead and PRB and you'll see the factorial symbol and I always say don't get excited because it looks like an exclamation point but it's not don't get excited um, and we could see the factorial symbol so anytime you want to do factorial, like for this example here, if I put in four factorial, so I'll hit the probability button and I'll either go down to three and hit enter or just hit three. And it's four factorial, don't get excited, and hit enter and 24. So notice your calculus is going to be able to do it way faster. 
And so um, we're going to use this a lot, especially when we do permutations and combinations. So once again, factorials just mean that we have the symbol that looks like an exclamation point. Don't get excited. It's not. It just means the product of all the natural numbers from that number down to one. All right, so how many ways can five different door prizes be distributed among five people? So we could do the categories As long as we are handing out five door prizes, five people, we're using all five prizes on five people. We got to use them all up. If we don't use them all up, then we can't use the factorial symbol that one, that yeah, just yet, right? So it has to be that number five descending all the way down. So here's door prize number one, two, three, four, five, right? prizes. So here's the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So how many door prizes does the first person get to choose from? Well, there's five on the table. They get to choose from five, right? And then the, four, the second person comes and there's only four on the table. The third person comes, there's only three on the table. And then you could see the pattern. So really, this is just five factorial because I start at a natural number five and it multiplies down all the way to one. Let's put this in the calculator. Don't, you know, work smarter, not harder. Five, go to the probability button, hit three, five factorial, don't get excited. It's 120. So it's 120 different ways, right, that five door prizes can be distributed among five people, okay? So now that brings us right into a situation where we're not, we don't have as many categories as we have, we don't have as many um, choices, right? So if we talk about the Olympics, right, let's say I have eight sprinters, so I have eight choices, right? But I only have three medals, right? I have gold, silver, and bronze. How many different ways can the gold, silver, bronze medals be awarded? So notice, even if I have eight sprinters, I don't have eight awards. Unlike the previous example, when I had five prizes and five people to give them to, right? Here I had four letters and a four letter code. Here I do not, I, only ha I have eight choices and only three categories. So let's see what that looks like. So here's gold, silver, bronze. So here's the gold, the silver, and the bronze. Your choices are, well, eight sprinters go and only one sprinter makes it to gold. So there's eight of them at the starting line that can get gold. Once that person is awarded gold, there's only seven sprinters left to get the silver and then only six to get the bronze. Right? And we can use basic multiplication rule and multiply, right? And you're like, oh, this is just like before. Absolutely. But notice that it does take the factorial form. So we do know the answer is 336 different ways the awards can be, you know, the medals can be awarded. And, um, but it does, again, it does take the factorial form where we see it, it is, does start with a natural number and it's going down. In fact, if I go over here, so let me go ahead and draw like a little barrier so we could talk about it a little further. So if I did eight times seven times six, so that's the pieces that are in the problem. But if I went ahead and added the rest of the factorial, let's say I added five times four times three times two times one, right? So I added that. So if I did eight factorial, right, which is eight times every number down to one, which I have written down, and let's just say I divided that by exactly the same thing, five times four times three times two times one, wouldn't all these reduce out and I would be left with the eight times seven times six. 
So essentially what I have on the top in the numerator here is 8 factorial divided by, and look what we have down here. I have, I start at 5 and I'm going down to 1. So on the denominator, I have 5 factorial. This is not a coincidence. Okay, I want to make sure you know that. In fact, I have 8 factorial down here, and I would like to talk about how I got 5 factorial down here. And you're like, oh, because you just finished the 8 factorial off and you need to divide. Exactly, but why the 5? Right? Why was 5 special? Well, think about it. We had 8 choices of sprinters and only 3 medals. So you tell me, what is the relationship between 5 when we're given 8 and 3? That's right. 8 minus 3 is 5. So really, this is going to be 8 sprinters minus the number of categories, 3 factorial. And so really what this is called now is now we have the permutation formula where you have n choices, right? So we have n choices and um, r categories. So if I had eight choices, that means I had n choices here divided by the number of choices minus the number of categories in parentheses factorial. So if I don't have equal amount, right? If I don't, if number of choices doesn't equal my categories, then I'll have to use permutations, especially if I'm only giving something once, right? There's no repeating, right? And the order matters, right? Order matters here in gold, silver, and bronze. Right, because oh, someone with gold is not going to want the bronze medal. They earn the gold, right? Same over here with the door prizes. This first person that gets to choose doesn't want to be the last one to choose, right? They want to have the five choices of the prizes. So order matters when it comes to permutations. So notice that's exactly the formula what we just did. NPR, N choose, um, N pick R, right? That's what I say, N pick R, P for pick, P for permutations, where you have N choices in R categories. And the most important part is that the order matters with permutation, okay? That's gonna be a super important part. And the question you're always gonna ask yourself, if order matters, then I have to go to permutation. So for example, in the marathon example next, we have a thousand people in a marathon and we wanna give out first, second, and last. And so order matters, right? The last person, you know, would love to be have the first prize, right? But the first person's not gonna give it up and give it to the last, right? That first person earned it. So order is going to matter. So if you have trouble, go ahead and put the hangman sign. Your categories will be first place, second, and last. Okay, you know you're going to multiply, and you have a thousand people to, at first to get the first place, and then 999 people left to get second, and well, and any of these 998 will be the last, right? But again, to be more sophisticated, we know that we have 1,000 choices of people to make these places, and we know we have three categories, right, awards. So this means that N is equal to 100 and R is equal to 3. And so we're taking 1,000 people and we're picking 3, 1,000 pick 3, to get these places here in our categories. So in the calculator, if you go back to that probability button right here, you'll see an NPR. You'll notice right under is NCR, which is combinations. We're doing permutations where order matters. And so number one, N pick R. So you're gonna be using number one for permutation. 
So let's go ahead and put in, we put in the N first, right? Let's put in 1000, go to the probability button, choose one, right, NPR, and then on the right side where it's blinking, put your categories three. We always want N pick R, enter, and that's how many. So you have nine, nine, seven, zero, zero, two, one, zero, zero, zero. So you have 997 million, 2,000 different ways people could place these three categories. To place first, second, and last. So when you know you have a permutation, I really wouldn't rewrite it in, um, you know, in multiplication rule form. I would definitely use this permutation formula in the calculator. Let the calculator do all that uh, counting work. What you, the hardest part is setting it up, but once you set it up, you can do it. So let's go ahead and try this next one, um, this next example. So this next example um, will be um, a five character password. So we get to use letters and um, where we have 26 letters in the alphabet, right? So we need five password characters. So notice we have our categories, R is five, right? Because we have five characters in our password. How many choices do we have for each character? That's right, we have 26 choices. It's whether we're allowed to repeat the letters or not, right? So we're gonna determine how many different ways if the repetition is allowed. Right? So if we can, if our, we could have A, 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 <laughs> or hopefully not, right, where the repetition is not allowed and we're gonna see the difference. So let's go ahead and look at if we can repeat um, letters. Okay, so if we can repeat letters, that's great. And order still matters with passwords. If my password is um, one, two, three, four, I couldn't say four, three, two, one, and it goes, right? It, the order matters in which the password is done, the characters in the password. So it doesn't matter whether or not we get a repeat letters, because I could do A, A, B, B, C, and I couldn't do C, B, B, A, A, right? Like password order matters. So we're still in the realm of like permutation. But in this case, if we have five characters, two, three, four, five, right? And we know we have 26 choices. That means the first character will be 26 choices. And I could always repeat that same character five times. So each pick of the character, I get 26 choices for those letters, which essentially is just 26 to the fifth power. Well, let's say I do not repeat no repetition of letters. Repetition of letters. Well, this means that if I have no repetition of letters, right, I would have, well, 26 letters on that first, but I take one. So that means I have 25 left, 24, 23, and 22, right? Because I cannot repeat any letters. Or I can notice that I this is no repetition of letters for a five character password means that I have 26 choices and I'm gonna pick five of them for each character or five, one for each character. So let's go ahead and go to our calculator. Let's put the number of choices, PRB one and five. And notice that I have seven, eight, nine, 3,600. So 7,893,600 different ways.
So essentially, no re there has to be no repeating of letters or repetition of characters, and order has to matter. And we know it's a permutation. The moment, even if order matters, but we can repeat letters, it's not a permutation anymore. In fact, we can just do 26 to the fifth in the calculator. And you'll see that we have, with repetition, we kind of assumed already that we would have um, more choices, obviously. And you have 11 million different ways with repetition. So if you can repeat characters, obviously you have more ways you can have passwords. But um, if you don't have repetition of any characters, then you're going to have less and order is going to matter and no repeating.